been a while since I've been down to the allotment down to very heavy rain and I've just come down on the first day I can uh, we're due to have a very heavy frost um, there was one this morning and it might be down to minus three where I live but my big success story with the apples this year has been this lovely Granny Smith on a dwarf rootstock it cropped very well last year but I retopped it up basically this has been fed very heavily um, I use over winter I use blood fish and bone um, some chicken manure and also some uh, seaweed liquid concentrated seaweed and that seems to have very much helped because the agricultural gypsums kept a lot of the bitter pit away that's been on some of my other apples but that's part of the crop there um, and they've got this whole massive bag full which I can I can barely barely lift it up but we've left some of the apples on the tree there for the wildlife these are the smaller ones here we have the other granny smith and as you can see it's starting to go a bit russet which is very nice um, just being picked now by Jane's fair hands there and these again we've leave them on the tree as long as we can but now is about right um, your last chance because the frosts are really going to be become very heavy down to below minus about minus three minus four in which case the apples then do get damaged by the frost so we can't leave it any longer but this is what we've got some already from this other Granny Smiths. So I would recommend Granny Smiths as a variety. What I would recommend with Granny Smiths is if you grow them um, on your plot is you can leave them on the tree a bit longer than people say. We, we don't really pick them properly till about now, third week of November. And only then, we're picking them only then because the frosts are really coming. That means that, that not only are they an eater, they are a sweeter eater. Granny Smith's um, grafted trees uh, we found make smaller apples so but if you just stick with it they will start to grow a bit bigger these are the largest ones on this other tree which is the third Granny Smith that we've been cropping um, today and we're going to leave some of these on the frost has just started to get them now as you can see with this one but the wildlife um, you can hear the robin tutting in the background the wildlife is hungry this time of year and blackbirds and lots of other birds like wood pigeons and sparrows etc they will come along they will eat um, this so it's important it's important food for wildlife to leave something for them on your plot here we have red ochre and although it's now getting into the third week of november they're still not quite ready it's the first time i've grown this crop and i'm not quite ready to lift the tubers up but i'm going to give them another fortnight because you have to wait until the foliage on top has completely died um, and I put in a good sort of I don't know half a dozen of, of the tubers um, once you lift them apparently you can wait till some of the tubers um, sprout and, put, and plant them next year so I'm hoping to have another go but only if I think they're viable and tasty etc not just for the sake of it but when I do dig them up I'll, I'll let you know as you can see this frost is just starting to get to them so it won't be long these are my red Brussels sprouts. I mean, I don't know if I'll grow them again. Got these from Blue Diamond Garden Centre, if any of you's ever been to one of them. The flagship one's near where I live, um, in the Midlands, in England. And this is what I've got so far. Doesn't look brilliant. Um, treated the white fly on them with a lavender oil spray. Mentioned it earlier on one of my other videos. But it looks like I'll get some sprouts off them, as you can see. They're starting to form here, but nothing to write home about. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend this particular crop, but I'll still do a taste test on it when they're ready. I, bought, I got these for Christmas, actually, but hey-ho. One thing that is really loving all this um, bark, chipped bark, as you can see, is the fungi around here. So mushrooms, shrooms grow very well around here. Well, someone's enjoying giving us a little serenade. Oh, he's a little bit shy, don't you think? Come on, Robin, give us a little song then. This is the crowing time when they all get together. There they are, off to their roosting sites.
There's always the stragglers. Look at these. We get this every time when we come down the allotments in the evenings. It's a lovely sight. There you go, there's a bunch of them there, off they go. Bye bye crows, off to roost. It's always, about, they always come in a big batch. It's a lovely sight to see them all. me today as you can see and the tree behind me here is one I leave for the wildlife it's more of a pollinator it's a golden delicious it's got a bit of a uh, bit of bit of pit on it but anyway it's been a brilliant pollinator so this year despite all the uh, extreme weather climate change we've still managed to salvage quite a decent crop of apples